So, here I am in Hoboken with the view of Manhattan skyline. No, it's not really, but it's the closest I could get with, with my current time. But anyway, despite traffic that's increasing across the country, they have managed to have zero traffic fatalities in seven years. And th that's actually astounding for American standards. Why? Because um, roads are getting wider in America. Vehicles are getting larger. There's really nothing you can do about it, really. According to some people, at least. And if you actually want to do something, people become very nimby all of a sudden. Like, people view this as a freaking pipe dream. But how are they able to do that? They do it by adjusting basically like fault point areas, whatever happens there. They actually try to make like some changes on the road. Not just say, it is what it is. That's not the way it goes, really. And like, what I'm saying is like, it's so disappointing that most people see it as an normal occurrence. It's wild. With the road design being the same way it was for about six decades, people have been seeing this as a way that it's always been this way. And it's normal. And perhaps it's even too normalized to the point where even we normalize road rages too much to the point where it's kind of normal to see someone pull a weapon out or even use their car as a weapon itself. And yeah, I know that may be exaggerating a little bit but let's be honest people view road rages as very freaking normal but once they see someone on the subway who's blasting music or someone who's in the worst state possible like someone who's homeless they act like it's already as dangerous as afghanistan already like i get it to be fair though being on the subway doesn't give you the same sense of security when you're in a vehicle because when you're in a vehicle you're pretty much shielded from the realities of this world but here's the thing though, public transit can actually be a lot safer if a lot of people use it and if it's actually reliable. And two, you're more likely to die in a car accident in comparison to being on the metro or the bus or the airplane or even biking actually. Hoboken citizens have seen a drastic increase in quality of, of life because since there are like less conflict between cars and pedestrians for a, a fatal accident to occur people are able to walk wherever they want without the risk of getting killed there's also a myth where people claim that if there's like no car traffic businesses will suffer especially small businesses the reality is that most people want to be in these areas that are friendly for people not for the automobile. And not only that people are happier, drivers are too. If we want to decrease traffic deaths across this country, we should copy what Hoboken's doing, or at least minimize the suburban development that we keep making constantly. In the development that we make constantly today, especially in car dependent suburbs, the roads tend to be meant for cars and no other purpose. Four to six lanes with a speed limit of 30 miles per hour. Well, the speed limit says 30, but in reality, no one's going that speed because driving us at the end of the day is a subconscious activity. Based on this road here, Harlem Avenue in Chicago, most people are gonna go like 40 or 50 down this road. Maybe even 60 actually. What makes this place even more dangerous is that pedestrians are literally walking right next to kind of like a semi-highway. And if someone gets accidentally pushed on that street, hey, that could actually cause a fatality. But hey, at least they're lucky enough to get a small strip of concrete that's right next to high-speed traffic rather than grass. I actually don't know which one I want at the end of the day. It doesn't make it any better that bicycles have to share traffic with cars, especially. What I learned what Hoboken is doing, I realized that it's okay for bikes to share traffic with cars. As long as it's done right, as long as bikers are well protected as well, either by bollards or even slow speed limits. But when you see people developing bike infrastructure like this, this is literally just asking for a fatality. People wonder why people don't bike on these roads. Gee, I wonder why, because it's so unsafe. But it's nowhere near as bad as a share, right? Sharrows are honestly the worst. It's like the very bare minimum of a bike lane that's not really a bike lane, and it sucks. So I found an article that ranks the most dangerous American suburbs or cities for pedestrians, and Pompano Beach was named the deadliest city in America for pedestrians and recorded 22 fatal accidents in 2021. Keep that in mind, that was during the peak of the pandemic. New Haven, Connecticut ranked 14 
and it had 23 fatalities in 2021. The worst part about New Haven is that it has a walk score of 68, which is relatively walkable and has the potential to be pedestrian friendly or even a pedestrian paradise. But it shows that they keep ignoring the hot spots where they should either make pedestrianization safe or they do it so poorly that pedestrians are still dying in these areas. If you look at the intersection of Temple and Chapel Street, it looks like a pretty walkable area. Yeah. However, here's one problem. The roads are super wide. Buildings are very close to these wide streets where pedestrian could like pop out of nowhere and get hit by a high speed vehicle. In short, having wide streets with mixed pedestrian infrastructure doesn't work. It's just asking for a pedestrian death, just like Harlem Avenue. The craziest example I found here was Wally Avenue and Ramsdale Street. As a matter of fact, two fatalities occurred in this intersection in April 2021. With Two happening basically in about a fortnight. The problem with this intersection is that it looks like it could be anywhere in America. The roads are too wide, there isn't any traffic calming whatsoever. The best they could do is a traffic light where people can speed past a yellow light at high speeds. Jeez. Like there are sidewalks, but the worst type of sidewalks are the ones that are right directly next to the main road. Once again, the worst part about this intersection here is that up until around 2011, and I believe they built this because of like, give it a shortcut through the forest. Oh god, yeah, they had to cut it down the forest too. This used to be a three-way intersection. Now it's four ways. Not only that, it, it looks even more dangerous. Ever since then, from 2005 to 2021, this very area has seen five fatalities. That is amazing. Not only they did nothing to improve pedestrian safety, they managed to make it worse. Boken is a city in New Jersey, west of New York City across the Hudson River with a population of nearly 60,000 as of 2024 and the city was growing population before the pandemic and what they've done with their spaces is beyond the mind of an average American. What makes it incredible is that unlike most US cities where they say it is what it is when an accident happens, they take feedback based on what they could do to mitigate traffic incidents, let alone traffic deaths. After all, people aren't perfect at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, they're doing this very, very well. Most of all, they actually get it done. Look at look at the three biggest cities in the US. It takes practically forever j just to get one bike lane down on the street, or maybe just paint. And to be fair though, they are the three largest cities in America, so it's bound to take longer than usual to get things done. So I guess a better comparison is like a smaller town like New Haven or Evanston, Illinois. Almost rarely sees any traffic deaths, although I still wish it was zero. They could definitely learn some things for sure. One change they made is daylighting. It's basically where vehicles aren't allowed to park within 20 feet or 6 meters from the intersection, which practically drastically improves pedestrian safety because the driver is able to see who's crossing before they even actually cross the intersection themselves. But, but what if they're speeding? The speed limit here is 20. 20 is practically plenty. Okay, but that doesn't get rid of the fact that they're gonna speed past 20. Well, there's a difference between setting the speed limit and actually building the road for the actual speed limit. This includes buildings near the roads, lines, other alternatives, if done right, that is. Bike lanes, although not protected, I can kind of see why they don't really need it protected, especially when it's a max speed of 20 miles an hour. 20 is plenty, after all. And when you're going that fast, you can easily react to pedestrians coming out like in an instant in comparison of going to 30 or even 40 or 50. With more alternatives, other than like narrow roads or optical narrowing, other alternatives in the same area, at t if done right, that is, because I do think that mainly having things separate is best. Can easily slow down car traffic and make it safe for everyone basically. Pedestrians, drivers, bicyclists, everyone. One traditional form of traffic calming in the modern day world is nothing exactly physically that you see apparent in driving is speed cameras. Unpopular opinion actually do approve of speed cameras. However, they're only useful as a short term solution and, and it could potentially block long-term solutions that are actually very effective. Because at the end of the day, once again, driving is a subconscious activity. People might forget there's a speed camera there, or they might forget the speed limit completely because they're just simply trying to get to one place to another. Or some people will be well aware of the speed limit and will try to go fast anyway, and just look at that fine as a premium to go fast 
just to end up in the same stoplight as that one guy who's going the normal speed limit. But at the end of the day, road design completely matters if you want to slow people down. Like if you look at these two roads on Washington Street and any other local street, you'll see that which ones, which one are you most likely to go slow on or fast on? The 20 is plenty rule works and been very efficient in recent times in the past seven years because of narrow roads, lines, etc. And all of this has reduced road fatalities overall. Even though they have managed to accomplish what most American cities couldn't, people are still giving this idea the cold shoulder. Like any, well, this or any type of traffic calming in general. And there are many reasons to it. And this could span from political will, it could tarnish the neighborhood character, if there was any to begin with. A guy from Point Pleasant, New Jersey said that it used to be a place where car traffic was flowing everywhere and a good amount of parking spaces were there for visitors as possible. And his statements can make sense here, because if you're from one area and a place that does something completely different, you will question whether something is good for them or not. However, the flaw comes when people actually want to come to these places. You see this highway here? Oh yeah, what an attractive highway. Everyone sure loves to go here, of course. This park here? Come on, I wish there was a highway. But I feel like that statement's a bunch of rubbish, honestly, because, um, think about it. How come when people go to Europe, they act like it's the best vacation they ever had? Gee, you wonder why, because it's not very car-centric, and it's actually safe to walk in these places. But even then, you can definitely get from Point Pleasant to Hoboken. It may still take less than double the time of driving, but I know it's still long, but it still takes less than double the time of driving. And besides, why, why do you need to make that statement when you don't even live close to it? You practically live closer to Philly, if anything. I know that sounds hypocritical because I'm making a video about another city, but the thing is, this should be applied everywhere. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronoun! <sighs> Apparently, woke is when you're trying to prevent traffic deaths. Yes, it is woke to prevent traffic deaths, apparently, which some Canadian psychologist pointed out, quote tweeting the Associated Press that they're woke for publishing the article, even though like about a week ago, they literally called Palestinian children minors and not children. But I swear, the term woke is the most overused term in today's society. It had good intentions at the start, now people are using it because they don't like what they're doing, in short. It's become used as much as the word literally back in 2016. Literally, 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 and literally, literally. And once again, it's pretty much used nowadays to disregard what's happening around the world in terms of inequality, injustice. I don't mean to get political like my last one here, but here's the thing, come on. Like, I know that there are some corporations that take it a bit too far when it comes to social adaptability. Like, that Bleach voice acting fiasco with everyone's favorite female character, Yoruichi. Or the deliberate insulting of an iconic classic that is Velma towards Scooby-Doo. But most of the time, the anti-woke is one of the most overdramatic people you'll ever meet. Like, I've seen it when it came to, like, claiming that the next GTA protagonist is trans, pronouns being added to Starfield, Bud Light putting rainbows on their beers, the Barbie movie, etc. It's wild how far they'll take it. And besides, here's the thing though. By definition, yes, this is woke. But here's the thing once again. This has been the traditional way of designing communities. So if you're really truly a traditionalist, You'd actually want more of these places, because at the end of the day, we are people, not from some Disney Pixar movie. If there's one thing that's holding America back, other than the four freight companies, of course, it's got to be NIMBYism, which stands for not in my backyard. And people can be NIMBY for various reasons. The common statement is, oh, this would be nice to have. But not in my backyard. It's, I really don't get you. You should either want it or not want it. There's no one in between. Then, yes, there are other reasons why people are NIMBY. This includes like a sudden increase in traffic, more noise, pollution, a decline in commercial revenue for some reason, which I don't get. Other types of pollution, especially when cars are idle, they basically admitted that cars are pretty bad for the environment. <laughs> Visual blight, 
or the loss of a, like the neighborhood character basically or in other words loss of a small town feel and I, I get it all these statements are pretty valid but they tend to twist it around to the point where they just don't want the neighborhood to change at all after all neighborhoods are evolving things just like how we evolved from the apes I have so much to talk about when it comes to nimbyism. However, for the sake of this, I'm gonna stick to road safety. I also hate when there's like new development for pedestrian safety coming up and they have to make up so many excuses of, of how it's unsafe. Like, oh, but what if a pedestrian ends up in the bike lane crossing the street? Or start complaining these bollards are like damaging their vehicles or something like that. Okay, when it comes to pedestrian safety, more people die being in a hit and run over people being in a hit and run by a cyclist. Being killed by a cyclist is quite rare. Zero to two pedestrians die after being hit by bikes. And they have to bring in like the safety stuff and all that stuff, saying that what if I'm backing out and then someone comes in last minute? Especially in my neighborhood, when people are complaining over trees being lined up on the freaking avenue. It's literally meant for people to slow down because that street is literally asking for people to go 60 miles per hour. One more time, look at this road here in Oak Park. Now look at this road here on the northwest side. Which road are you more likely to go fast on? People will make so many excuses, I swear to God, to, for something to not be built. I'd like to talk more about nimbyism, but I need to condense this whole video. And for the sake of pedestrian safety, what Hoboken is doing is incredible. It makes the neighborhood so much safer then, as a whole. There are at least a few reasons why fatalities have increased for pedestrians in the past several years. And one of them being there's like no regulations of how big vehicles should be or how small vehicles should be for it to be safe for both the pedestrian and the driver. Also, it's the fact that we keep designing places that are only for the private vehicle, not really for pedestrians. We kind of expect everyone to be in a vehicle nowadays, and if you're outside, shit, you're poor, you're homeless. I kind of look homeless here already, to be honest with you. In 2021, it was actually its worst year yet, despite it being the pandemic. Like, just over 7,000. The second and third ones in developed nations, Turkey and Italy. Turkey only had, like, just over 1,000, and Italy only had, like, just below 500. And if you put it to scale, to, like, almost the equivalent to the U.S. population, it doesn't even get near 7,000. And yes, like, I've noticed that on a municipal level, it may not seem like a lot, but the amount of people dying in this country because they've been run over by a vehicle in comparison like everywhere else in the world, like no one deserves it. Looking back, yes, even at a small scale, it made me realize that one life is just too many and especially apply to driving. That can especially be riding the metro. I know that gets demonized every now and then, but at the end of the day, it still doesn't get rid of the fact that riding the metro is a lot safer. But yeah, it kind of frustrates me that most people think traffic calming is somehow fucking dangerous. Really, it's, it's not. Like, not only does the opposite, but it really makes our communities more lively. Because at the end of the day, once again, how can you be protesting this shit to begin with? But yeah, if you liked it, go like it. If you dislike it, like it anyway. Hit the red button, follow the Twitter. I don't even know if I'm going to have Twitter at this point, but yeah. See ya.